diagnosis of myocardial infarction. Uh, so it says that in the first six hours, um, the ECG is the gold standard. So um, if, if it comes in a question, then uh, within the very first six hours, the best thing to do is an ECG just to let them know what is happening with the heart. Uh, the cardiac troponins, um, they are the um, cardiac enzymes or um, the biomarkers that we can check in blood. They start rising uh, for the cardiac troponin 1. Uh, it starts raising um, after four hours of um, the the infraction or um, the ischemic event. So it peaks, it goes up to the uppermost uh, at 24 hours, and uh, it stays in your crease for seven to 10 days. So it basically lasts for seven to 10 days. Uh, it is considered more specific uh, other than protein markers. While for the creatine kinase MB, it increases after six to 12 hours. So um, not within four hours, it just a little bit late. So it starts uh, rising uh, in 6 to 12 hours and it goes up to the highest peak it can get and between 16 hours to 24 hours. So um, it is prim uh, predominantly found in myocardium, uh, but can also be released from skeletal muscles. So it's not so specific because it can come uh, from the myocardium. In addition to that, it can get out of the skeletal muscle as well. So it's not very specific, but it is useful in diagnosis uh, of the re-infraction because um, the uh, creatine kinase um, uh, and B type would go uh, down in a shorter time. So we can um, recheck and see if there is a new infraction happening after the first one. So it, it uh, helps in the re-infraction assessment following, uh, of course, a, a primary acute MI. Because as I said, the levels return to normal after uh, 84 hours, while the levels of the uh, troponin, they go down after 7 to 10 days. So it takes really long in order for it to go down to its normal level. Level. So we cannot use it um, to check for um, a new ischemia that is happening in less than seven days, let's say, less than a week. But um, for creatine kinase uh, and B type, we can check for um, re infraction that is happening after acute MI, like basically within 48 uh, um, hours, because it's going back to its normal level uh, after 48 hours. So I said that the ECG changes can include a C elevation. And um, so this is P, Q, R, S, T. So um, this is the ST part. And um, we can, of course, find it um, elevated in uh, myocardial infraction. Uh, that is, of course, for um, the STEMI. Um, that's the ST elevation myocardial infraction because what is happening is actually a transmural infract. So it's an infract that is involving all the layers of the myocardial wall. Uh, we can also find ST depression. That piece is just going down. Um, and that is that happens in the non-ST elevation myocardial infraction infraction because what's happening here is subendocardial infract so it's an infract that is um i'm pretty sure it was here somewhere so this is the subendocardial infract so it's not going all the way to the um uh both sides of the wall not like this is the transmural it's taking all the wall while the subendocardial is only taking two-thirds of it so that's why it's showing um st depression not st elevation so we can also have um see in an ECG hyperacute, that's a very peaked um, T wave. And also we can find T wave inversion with pathological Q waves or poor R wave progression. Um, that would mean probably evolving or an old transmural infract. So uh, if you look at this graph, so if we're um, thinking about the days after um, I, like this is day zero and that's going up uh, by the days. And then if we think about the um, uh, how much the cardiac um, markers are going up as well. So for the troponin one, as I said, um, as it says, actually, it starts rising in four hours and it goes to the peak within 24 hours, as we said, then it takes seven to 10 days to go down. 
So, and it's very specific. It cannot tell us like really, um, uh, it's very specific for uh, letting us know about the uh, myocardial fraction, but um, for the creatinine kinase MB, it starts um, rising in six hours and then it goes down within like much shorter period. And that is um, uh, 48 hours. So that's why you can use it to check for um, re-infraction. So that's for the diagnosis of myocardial infraction, now for the ECG localization. So um, basically what we have is we are going to have um, multiple possibilities, like these are the coronary arteries. Um, let me use um, blue color over here. Okay, so these are the coronary arteries that are supplying the heart, and one of those, um, it, it, we always have a probability for one of these to be um, shut down and cut. That's when we're having an ischemic uh, infraction. So um, each one of those arteries lies um, either to the right or to the left or to the inferior of the myocardium or just to the interior side. So um, the ECG leads, they look at the heart from multiple directions. So let's say there is an eye over here, and then there is an eye over here, and then there is an eye over here. And the same thing goes for uh, all of these leads. So um, each lead is looking at the heart from this aspect, uh, from its own aspects. For example, the AVL looks at the heart from um, this side, while the um, lead three looks at the heart um, from this side, AVR looks to the heart from this side. So each one of those has its own um, unique uh, angle of looking at the heart. So basically, um, uh, if we take, uh, if we look at this um, main image, so um, yeah, let me use this color. Uh, what we have is the, well, this is the left side. So we have the AVL, um, that's the left side, and the AVR, that's the right side of the patient, and then AVF, that is the foot. So this is, um, these are the feet of the patient. We also have three main uh, leads. The one, number one, that is looking um, from the um, lateral side, um, lateral side to the heart. And then um, there's lead two, and then there's lead three. And there are supplementary um, leads that are named one, two, uh, V1, of course, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6. So for example, if you look at the um, V1, V2, they're looking at the anterior surface of the heart, while like the V3, V4, V6, and including also V1, they're looking at the um, lateral side of the heart. So um, now we're going to see how does that imply. So um, Let's say that we have, this is the infract location, so let's say that we are having an um, infract and at the anterior septal area, that is the LAD coronary artery, so left anterior descending. So let's take a look at the heart and see where is the left anterior descending artery. So this is the left anterior descending artery. So basically, if we are having an in um, an embolus here or um, anything that is obstructing the blood flow. So that means this area, for example, is just going um, down and, and it's shutting and it's having an infract. So um, we would see that in V1 and V2 and it's the blue color. So this is the blue color, V1 and V2. And um, yeah, it makes sense because um, they are looking at the interior uh, parts of the heart that was supposed to be supplied by the left anterior descending or interventricular artery. That's why it's called anterior septal. So anterior from anterior part and septal is from the um, septum part. So that's why it, the infract, if the infract happens specifically at this coronary artery that is the left anterior descending so this part of the heart is going to die and that is considered anterior part of the heart so what looks at it is um the uh, v1 uh, and v2 these two things they look at it and they are colored for understanding colored blue so we will look 
if we see an ST elevation over here or over here, that means the what the problem is um, is the in the left anterior descending. So it's we are having an anterior septal uh, infract. So that the same thing goes for all of these um, examples. So if we take a look at this orange color, if we are having an infract at the anterior apical area, so anterior from anterior and apical um, from the apex of the heart, uh, that means we are having a problem or obstruction with the distal left anterior descending so it's basically the same um, um, artery but um, it's the distal part of it here we are having an obstruction so the area of the heart that is going to die is of course uh, somehow here so what looks at it uh, what it shows it shows in v3 to v4 so if we look at the lease this is v3 and this is v4 and it makes sense because if both of these leads are looking somehow in this area that we said that we just said it it was infracted. So yes, um, these are for understanding of colored um, orange. So the ST elevation or ST depression in case we have non stimmy uh, would show um, the ST changes would show in V3 and V4, and that is called um, we are having an anterior apical um, infract. Uh, while for um, the green color, um, let me choose a color green here, probably it's easier. Okay. So for um, if we are having an anterior lateral infract, that's the anterior side of the heart plus the lateral side of the heart, that means we're having an obstruction in one of those. Either it's the left anterior descending or the left circumflex artery, and they will show, like the ST depression elevation will show in the V5 to V6 uh, leads of the ECG. So let's look for the left anterior descending. It's the same thing that we talked about, plus or on the the left circumflex artery. So um, if we're having somehow like an infract here, then um, the area below it is the one that is going to be uh, infracted. So what looks at it or, or it will show in V5 to V6. So let's see V5 and V6. And yes, this is V5, this is V6. And if we keep looking, then they will somehow look at the infraction area over here. So that's why we can see it uh, in um, uh, V5. This is V5 and this is V6, okay? So that's where we can see the ST elevation or ST depression. Also, we have if we have the problem is only with the specifically with the lateral left complex artery, so it's um, specifically saying not here, not here, not here. So it's only in the left complex artery, and um, this is it. So it's basically like um, killing or infracting the lateral side of the heart. So uh, it will show in the one in AVL. And if you look at it, let me just clear up all of this mess and as we said it's on the left side of the heart so basically what looks at it is lead one and lead AVL that's why we can see the ST elevation or depression in lead one or lead AVL and in, in ECG this is where we find lead one so this is where we find ST elevation or ST depression also AVL we have ST elevation or ST depression okay for the pink color, um, we're having uh, for having um, an inferior. Uh, that means inferior MI. That means uh, we're having a right coronary artery obstruction. So if you take a look at the right coronary artery obstruction, so it's over here. So let's say if it's obstructing right over here, that means this area is going to be infracted. So um, what looks at it or where it's going to show, it's in lead one, uh, lead two three and AVF and this is lead two, lead three and lead AVF and if we go up to the heart they're looking at this side of the heart so they're basically seeing this area of infraction that we said is going to be infracted over here uh, due to the obstruction or any and right coronary artery so um, that's why it's called an inferior so this is considered like the inferior parts of the heart. So it's considered um, uh, an inferior um, MI. That's why it's called um, inferior MI. And it's, it's what causes it is an obstruction at the right coronary artery. And it will show in the peric area. So that is the lead 
to late 3 and late AVF, um, the ST elevation or depression would show up in these um, places. So uh, what we have also is if we have a posterior PDA, um, that is um, posterior, let me choose this again, posterior artery. So um, it's this faint color over here. If it's obstructed, that means that we are having an inferior obstruction. It's on the, um, I mean, posterior, sorry, it's, it's posterior side of the heart. Then it would show on uh, V7, V9, ST depression in V1 to V3 uh, with tall airway. So basically it's the rest of the um, ECG. Actually not two, this is two. Uh, it's the AVR. So that's all of it basically um, um this is an example of if we're having um, um the, like a proximal branch a block from the proximal right cranial artery this is the area that is going to die and uh, this is the right common artery and this if we have a front uh, infraction over here or um, an obstruction over here that means this whole area is going to be refracted that's how we have inferior mi so it's just um, a simpler explanation, I guess. Also, what we have here um, is just an, uh, probably an easier way to uh, know which artery is going to affect which lead. So for having the left anterior descending, so this was the left anterior descending, then it will, um, of course, it, it, it lo uh, I mean, will be localized to the anterior wall of the heart and the anterior septal because this is the septum between the um the two ventricles so it will show in uh, from um uh v1 to v4 and um v uh one to v2 the one to, uh, one to four is considered anterior leads while v1 to v2 are septal leads uh the same thing applies for um left main or left circumflex artery it's uh, the infraction would be anterior uh, lateral and that is in the lateral leads they are V4 to V6 and uh, 1 in AVL. While if we are having that, oh, that also goes for the left circumflex artery because it's, um, you know, feeds the lateral wall of the myocardium. While the right current artery, it feeds the inferior wall. So the infraction uh, would be shown on lead 2, lead 3, and AVF. And that is basically the same thing that we just um, talked about. And that's it. Should be fine.